Howdy, howdy, y'all. Welcome back to my channel, The Stone Mandalorian. I appreciate y'all checking out my review today. And I'm actually taking a look at the Mandalorian Privateer, which is the 39th figure in the freaking Mandalorian subline. So many figures in this subline, man. But once again, we're getting another uh, blue Mandalorian. But this one is, um, I don't know, man. There's just something special about this one that I like. I've been seeing the Shriekhawk 2-pack in the single release. And I know we're kind of getting a little burnt out on blue Mandos, but... I don't know, man. This one just kind of like sticks out to me for some reason. I really like the color blue. Again, this is the, I believe this is the first Mandalorian in this new packaging, and it looks pretty good. That blue just really pops against that orange backdrop. But getting onto the figure, uh, it is pretty much a Death Watch Mandalorian body with like a little bit of retooling and kit bashing with uh, Din Djarin Mandalorian and a couple other pieces. But for the most part, it is the Death Watch Mandalorian with some different overlays and retooling, like I said. But uh, it's a pretty good looking figure, man. I've seen it at Target and I've seen it in person. I was like, you know what? Why not? You know, to me, clone troopers and stormtroopers are pretty much like Mandos. You can't really never have too many. And by the time you get them on the shelf and they're all together, they just look so freaking dope together, man. But uh, I'm excited to get this thing uh, open. So let's not waste any more time and get into it. And we're going to take a look at the sculpting, articulation, and some of the paint because it looks like there might be a little bit of weathering. But let's get into it. So, y'all, I got the privateer out of the box, and I know we've gotten a lot of blue Mandos in the line recently, but I just think it's a really simple and easy way for Hasbro to bump, a, get a couple more dollars out of each one of these molds. And I got to say, you know, the blue and the gray, I really love the color scheme here, the bluish gray with the little hints of brown on the belt and the boot. It just really goes together nicely. Something about that white stripe over the helmet just really pulls me in. I don't know what it is. I would have liked to have seen maybe like a little bit more white on the figure just to match this kind of stripe maybe just some accents around on the edges of the armor or whatever but maybe a fun custom to get into and kind of dabble in and do a little bit but other than that like like i said i know we've got a lot of blue mandos but if they can give us cool repaints like these i'm for it just because it helps them get a couple more dollars out of this these molds that they use which supposedly are anywhere from 25 to 100 grand to make for each single mold um, for a figure and whatnot, but this is kind of like a kit bash between like the Mandalorian Din Jaren and the Death Watch Mando. There's a little bit of, of mixed pieces and stuff, but I really like the use of it. Um, I'm looking at the legs now. It looks like it's reused for Mando and then obviously some pieces from the Death Watch Mando. But uh, like I said, I like the color scheme. Very simple grayish silver blue color scheme, but yeah, I just I really like the silver around the fucking visor, dude. It just looks so good. It makes that black pop even more. But uh, let's take a look, closer look, and I'll show you all the articulation, accessories, and uh, closer sculpting details. And I figured I'll just start off with articulation here. So we got a little bit of side-to-side -side head tilt here. There's a little bit of up and down motion. Get about that far down, that far up. Head does spin 360 degrees around. It's got rotation, of course. The rangefinder also moves as well. Go ahead and pop this backpack off. Same old, same old with these jetpacks. Just the, the two straight pegs and the circle peg. But getting a close look at the jetpack here. Nothing, nothing fancy. Looks like the same mold pretty much for the Death Watch Mando. If I'm... Uh, these little pieces sticking off over the top kind of remind me of it. Pretty sure this is exactly the same. This supposedly this missile is, but oh yeah, got a removable missile here, so that's a nice little touch. But mine's gonna be staying on. These also move, of course, and you can if you have the dark trooper, um, the blast effects or the jet effects for the dark trooper actually look really sick and plug in perfectly to these jetpacks. For Paz Vizsla, I'm sorry. Uh, for pre Vizsla and for the Death Watch Mando. But uh, getting on around to here, arms do spin 360 degrees. It gets a little hairy just because of the O-ring system we have here. I love these these new shoulder pads. Well, it's not really, they're not technically new now, but you know, I'm even just now noticing some weather on this figure. It's pretty nice. We'll get a closer look at that in just a second. So getting onto the articulation here, full T, no issue whatsoever, thanks to these awesome O-ring shoulder pads. Really deep cut elbows here, so you can get right at 90, slightly below 90 here. And I wonder if this has got, yep, so we've got gaunt, it's got gauntlet swivel just as uh, the Death Watch Mando does. 
We have a, uh, is this a horse? Yeah, no, I'm sorry, a vertical hinge here on the right hand, trigger finger, of course. Got some nice silver right here. There's a horizontal hinge here on the left hand. Gauntlet swivel looks good. Also, there's gauntlet swivel and elbow swivel. Just thought I'd point that out. There is some rotation at the abdomen. Kind of cuts off right here, midway. This is this whole piece is a rubber overlay, just like the Death Watch Mando. But there is some rotation, slight back and forth, not a whole lot. Typical Black Series, you can go further back than uh, forward. Getting down, down to the legs here. Full split, no problem. I love these, like, the, the blaster holster overlays that they have now. This is all loose. And I really love the, the way that these look without those ugly straps coming over. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But, and then getting to the knee, of course, we also have the floating knee pads, which is a huge, huge, huge improvement in the Black Series. So we get to right about 90. You could probably go a little, no, nah, it's getting kind of, no, nah, it's buttoned up right. So you can get right to 90. Feet go down pretty far. They also come up a, a little decent amount. And, of course, we have rockers as well. So pretty standard model articulation. Oh, I almost forgot to show you all the butterfly hiding way in there. You can kind of see that there. So the also butterfly. So it's got all the modern articulation of a modern black series. Getting a closer look here. Take a look at this weathering. And you can see on his armor there's some, there's some hits of... Of silver here. Let me get this a little more in focus for y'all. I like this on the shoulder pad right here, even on the gauntlets. This would definitely be be a fun figure to get some silver paint and just kind of kind of mess around with. We got some more on the gauntlets here. Pretty clean on the back, which is typical of the Black Series. I'm trying to see if there was any little bit of weathering on this shoulder pad, mostly on the front, which is where you probably see most of the action. I like how the paint is chipped right here along the blue line. This silver is very beautiful, very metallic looking. Makes that visor kind of pop along this blue. This is also a nice touch. Very clean little rectangles here on the side. I even got a little splash of red right here on the white that goes all the way around the helmet. Very clean silver in here too. Range finder looks good, very clean. Visor looks good. Would be cool to see uh, like a more like of a glossy black paint, but that's just me nitpicking. I really do like this silver on the visor. That looks really awesome. These these little rectangles are very clean. Very, very clean. Even the belt here got a little splash of like this kind of darker silver. Kind of like a slate color. Looks really good. And of course, the as I was stating, er, er, stating earlier, this overlay for the blaster holster, just I love the texture it has. Kind of emulates leather. And it just looks and fits really good. With the figure. Got some pouches here on the back. Very nicely sculpted. These leg, these little legs look familiar. From the Death Watch Mando. These plates. Oh, I almost forgot we have thigh swivel here too. That's one cool thing about these Mandalorians. Is how their armor kind of covers that, that thigh swivel on the front. Getting down here. To the gauntlet. Nice silver on the, on the hand guard here. Nice texture. Nice sculpting. This figure would definitely look badass with a little bit of a couple splashes of silver on the edges. So nice, nice brown. I like this two tone from the light brown to the dark brown. The boots, very beautiful chocolate brown. I love texture. That looks awesome. Got the straps on the inside of the leg here. That looks very nice. Look at the stitch. Like it looks like the boots are stitched. You can even see the stitch into the sole. That's a very nice touch. So like I said, I know we've gotten a lot of blue Mandos lately, but this figure is, it, I don't know, I think this is one worth picking up. And I know it's very plain blue at that. It's not even got like any other splashes of color. But like I, I sound like a broke record. Like I said, man, if Hasbro can do these little cool, these cool repaints and make a couple more dollars out of these molds that they make, I'm fine with that, dude. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. I do want to, I'm trying to see if this rides up or maybe it's supposed to stay under i don't know but yeah man this is a really cool pickup i've seen this at target a couple weeks ago i've had it for a couple weeks now and uh i wasn't going to pick up any more of these blue mandos but then i seen the shriek hawks coming out the two-pack and the single release and i was i don't know just kind of with that i was like you know what though 
you can't really have too many Mandos, in my opinion. Kind of like Stormtroopers and uh, Clone Troopers. You just can't have too many. But I freaking love the way this looks, man. Simple repaint that Hasbro can uh, get a little bit more use of. I'm, I'm fine with that. And I almost forgot, but here is the Privateer's Blaster. And I think this is like a... Ah, man. I, I Sometimes I, I get blasters and, and vehicles dead on, and sometimes I'm off. I feel like this is a, a West Star something, I believe, Mandalorian Blaster. I really forget. I could be wrong, but in a cast in like a sparkly gray plastic, it looks looks a decent sculpt. We've seen this before, I'm pretty sure. Typical Mandalorian blaster. And now it's time for the side by side comparisons, motherfucker. But this is one of my favorite part of my reviews is when I kind of bring in some other figures to show you all the scale, and it just really brings in that that real world element. It just makes you feel more cool when you have the figures side by side together. But here on the right, well, actually both of these, both on the right and the left here is the Death Watch Mandalorian, one of my, my one of my favorite figures, totally an underrated figure. And this one here on the right, you can see is a lot different than this one on the left. This one on the right was actually customized by my buddy Hyperdrive Collections that he gifted to me for free. This blaster is not a Black Series blaster, but he he uh, gold gold plated it out and uh I think it looks. I think it's a really nice addition, and it pops against uh, the figure itself. But this was customized for my buddy Hyperdrive Collections, and I, it's a very, uh, very interesting take on a Mandalorian. But I really like what he did with this figure. It's an awesome way to add some variety to your shelf, and I just love it very much. But yeah, you can see that this this privateer is practically the same freaking figure, man. Other than it's like I said, some slight retooling you can see with the legs and the holster. Like you can see this Death Watch holster, he's got the he's got the strap right here, and this new one doesn't. Whoa, whoa, where you going, buddy? But these figures look awesome. Like, dude, this just this is a dope squad right here. If you just set these up on the shelf, they just look awesome together. Here on the left is Quill, and on the right is the uh, Droid Build Up Pack with the that came with the Pit Droids and the BD Droid R R five. Here on the left is the Dark Trooper looking badass, of course. And on the right is Carl, well, I mean, uh, damn it, shit, uh, Grief Karga. And here on the left is Ahsoka Tano, Mandalorian. And on the right is also a Mandalorian subline figure, the Light Cruiser Luke Skywalker. And to end things off here, here on the left is the brand new from 2024, Glyvis Ringworld, the best Din Djarin Mandalorian we have in the line. Uh, arguably as good, if not better, than the SH Figuarts and the other import brands, in my opinion. And on the right, for a $25 figure, the fact that this is in the same conversation as an import is crazy. But anyways, on to the last one here on the right is the Throne Room version of Boba Fett. So there you have it. There is the Mandalorian Privateer from, uh, I believe it's Season 3. It might even be Season 2. But... I, I recommend picking up this figure, man. If you already have a bunch of Mandos, I understand why you pass on this. If you have a whole Mando shelf, it is the same exact figure. But this is great for just adding some variety to your shelf, having some uh, some more custom fodder to make. You can pull these apart and kit bash with your other Mandalorians. There's just a lot that can be done with this figure, and I just I think it's a, I think it's a decent pickup, man. I know a lot of people. I've said this probably four or five times in this review now. I know, but. I know people are really burnt out on these blue mandos. It's a whole lot of blue, blue, blue. This, but it just may, it gives it, it gives it a very uh, united feel on the shelf when you have all of them together. They look they coincide with each other very well. And my my channel being named after Mandalorians, the Stone Mandalorian, I just feel like it's kind of my duty to pick up any kind of mando that they put out. You know if that makes sense. And me and my brother are just very. Uh, Mandalorians are just very badass to us growing up, so anytime they're going to put out one that's decent and it's not just like absolutely unnecessary, just like an unnecessary release, I'm, I'm most likely going to pick it up. But I'm going to keep this review short, y'all. Uh, I have a lot of figures and stuff that I need to be getting to reviewed, and I know some people like the long-term content, some people like it short, but I'm just kind of experimenting here. But there really isn't a whole lot to say about this figure. Like I said, it's pretty close to... The Death Watch Mandalorian. If you've dealt, if you have that figure, this is pretty much the same thing with some slightly different bits of sculpting and a little bit different tooling, re, some retooling. But it's not much. Other than that, it's pretty much the Death Watch Mandalorian. 
And I love that figure so much. It's such an underrated figure. But definitely recommend picking this one up, y'all. Um, so appreciate you checking out the video, the review. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a like and subscribe. It's very appreciated. I hope you're having a great day or night whenever you're watching this. May the force be with you.